Oh, hey, hey everybody. I didn't hear you come in. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews. Hey, let's go see what's in the fridge today. Alright guys, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Review today. Today's beer should be a treat. This is Heavy Seas Mutiny Fleet Letter of Marquis 2011 edition. This is a Belgian style Duvel. Uh, story behind this, uh, Heavy Seas uh, does a homebrew competition every year and the winner this year is uh, Doug Johns. Uh, Doug John, he has a uh, a homebrew store in Forest, Virginia, which is about, I don't know, it's probably about 45 minutes away from here. We uh, re-rode the motorcycles out there last year and met him and uh, checked out his uh, store. And real nice guy, and he won the competition uh, this past year, and they brewed his beer. This is brand new. I mean, this it's, it's so new, Beer Advocate don't even have it on their site yet. No reviews, no nothing. And Rate Beer just has it listed with no reviews, no picture, or nothing. So this is brand spanking new. And the odd point about that, they're having a beer festival here tomorrow and called Brut Brutopia here in Salem, Virginia. And they're going to have two out of the three kegs that were produced of this there tomorrow. So uh, I'm going to review. I, I bought this today when I went on the beer run. Uh, uh, down to uh, Mr. Beal or Mr. Beal's uh, wine cellar, a uh, new place that I found. Uh, uh, who's the nice guys. I went in and met the owner, uh, Bill Phillips, and, and the guy that works there, Sean. I can't remember his last name, but uh, real nice people, real helpful. And uh, just went to check them out because uh, they've only been in business about nine months down there. And uh, just, uh, just heard some good things. I want to go in and introduce myself and check them out. I'm going to read you a little bit off the bottle here because there's not a lot written about this beer. Uh, winners from our annual Letter of Marquee Homebrew Competition will work al alongside our brewmaster to create a yearly special release. Historically, a Letter of Marquee was a document that made a pirate a legitimate privateer. Our Letter of Marquee makes a homebrewer a legitimate professional. The Mutiny Fleet was uh, birthed by heavy seas brewers who were discovered secretly brewing small batches of big beers to amuse the pilots of their fellow crew. Since most secrets are best kept bottled up, for bringing you these big flavors, extraordinary brews and 22 ounce bombers. Embrace your inner pirate and join the mutiny. This rear's recipe from David Edmondson and Doug John Alcohol ABV is 8%. So, uh, it's a pleasure for them to brew this guy's beers. I'm sure to him and to me because I've met this guy. He's a really nice guy. Seems to know what he's doing. He's been brewing beer. He's only, he hadn't had the store there that long as far as I know, but he's been brewing beer. He's been a home brewer for a long time. He took first place in the Eastern Regional AHA competition in 97 for his Roush beer. He took third in the competition in 98 for his German Bach. He took first in Dominion Cup for his Belgian Ale in 96. And second in the Great Arizona Beer Festival for his uh, uh, classic Pilsner in, two, in the year 2000. So, man knows what he's doing. I'm flapping my gum. Just want to give you some info on this guy. Uh, I hope he's at the Brewtopia tomorrow and, uh, and I get to uh, reintroduce myself again because like I said, it's been a little over a year ago since we went out there and checked him out. And uh, Nice guy. Let's get this thing opened up and see what it's about. I hope it's cold enough. It's only been in the fridge for a couple hours. So. I can smell it from here already. <laughs> look at that. That almost looks like a wine in a glass. That is a deep, rich, amberish copper color in there. Very, very clear. I can see right through that. Absolutely, perfectly clear in a glass. Look at that. That looks marvelous. A lot of bubbles streaming up from the bottom. Let's get a nose on it. Well, you got the grapefruit going on. This is like a sort of like a, a, a it's a Belgian double. It's almost like a dark, a, a strong Belgian strong. 
a lot of sweet malt grapefruit uh, some dark some darker fruit in there maybe some figs and dates and raisins oh wow it really smells good it's a pleasure to to drink beers with people that know what they're doing so cheers guys Very, very nice. A lot of fruit in that. A lot of the Belgian yeast going on in there too. Wow. That is so nice. It's rich and caramely. It's Wow. Just had a little hint of the alcohol in this and at 8%. Not bad though. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary for an eight percent beer. Maybe a double on top of that. You kind of expect that's going to happen. Wow, very, very nice. If uh, Doug's there tomorrow, I'm gonna congratulate him on winning the competition and congratulate him on brewing a damn killer beer. It's pretty tasty. I'm looking forward to getting a. Uh, a glass or a cup of this tomorrow, right out of the keg. So, I, I may, uh, I may have to do a little insert back on this, uh, or just to let y'all know. Uh, I don't. I may re-review it. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen here yet. But I am going to give a glass of it tomorrow, if at all possible, because there's going to be two kegs of it here, and I'm working the show, so I'll be behind the scenes. I'm get, I'm getting one. I guarantee it. You wait and see. But anyway, this is about out of the fridge. Forty degrees. It's an excellent beer. It's an above average beer. Might be a little. A little biased on this one since I know the guy that won the competition. So, congratulations to Doug John. And like I said, he owes pints of plenty. Uh, if you're in the Lynchburg, Forest, Roanoke area, uh, get his website, pintsofplenty.com. Check him out, guys. Stick around. I'm going to sip on this and let it warm up and be right back. We'll do that final chug and great. Alright, guys, thanks for sticking around. Got just a little left in the glass. It's like a brand here. Let's look at that. Look at the lacing at least when I swirl it around. This is a pretty good beer. Huh? I'm impressed. I'm not surprised with all the credentials that Doug's got. It's a, it's a damn impressive beer. So, final chug, guys. As it warms up, you can taste a little more of the alcohol as you always can. Uh, but it's very pleasant. It's a little toppy. A little caramely there, but you've got the Belgian style with the with the Belgian yeast and the grapefruit and the darker fruits because it was a darker beer. You've seen it; uh, it was a uh, pretty ruby colored, so it brings out the darker fruits to me, uh, the figs, the dates, and the raisins. So I'm anxious to get to the uh, Brutopia tomorrow and uh, and uh, try this on the keg keg style and see how much different it tastes and what this does. So, guys, uh, there's no ratings on this. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it an. I'm gonna give it an eight, which is an A minus. Uh, the only thing that I can fault it over, and being a uh, double, it's not gonna matter. It has no date on the bottle, so uh, I'm gonna harp on that. Every time I do a beer review and don't have a date on the bottle, you're gonna hear about it, guys. So if it was, uh, if it had a date on the bottle, it might get even a nine or even a ten. So we never know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna talk to. Uh, Talk to Doug when I'm, uh, if he's there tomorrow and see, ask him why. Uh, I asked the guys, John, Mr. Bills today, uh, what was up with not having dates on the bottles and they didn't have an answer for me either. So uh, I'm going to keep asking people around, especially the people that make it and brew it. Why? How do you get away with that? I don't understand. So guys, if you've, uh, if you've seen this or you, if you see it, pick it up, give it a try. This is a, this is a pretty tasty beer. I think it is anyway. So rate, comment, subscribe and Come on back tomorrow. We're going to do something else. Uh, if, I, if I do a follow-up on this, guys, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll post it and let you know what the deal is. So, see you tomorrow.